Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. This is the second of the basics video. In the last basics video, we took a look at, ooh, just getting started, where to, where to start coding, a little bit about Zim, about the resources. Uh, this is the Zim site at zimjs.com, and there's all sorts of things more here that we didn't even talk about last time, such as all these panels. They show us what types of things we can make in Zim. Let's just take you through that quickly. So here's uh, the generative art one, and there's a little description here, but it can open up with a more button. Before we open it up, though, uh, down below we've got a bunch of examples, nice big colorful examples, and you can click on any of those to see uh, how they work or see them in action. Up above here in the More section, we talk about the parts of Zim. Here's a Zim loop, for instance, the parts of Zim that help us make this type of art. And time, how we can do things in time. We've got a ticker class and... Uh, the graphics and this thing called the generator and the Zim pen and shapes. So these are things in Zim that help you make art, for instance. So uh, down below somewhere, blah, 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 is a less. <laughs> so we just open this up more and less. And then back on the Zim site, there are 10 different ones here. Uh, this was launched in Zim 10. Here's games, for instance. Same deal. The more button the examples of games, blah, blah, the more button you open up and it tells you the parts of physics and the modules. We've got a game module, for instance, uh, how things are being used in industry, hit tests, controllers. So uh, once again, each of these sections has that more section where you can um, take a look at more stuff <laughs> relating to all that. Wonderful. Um, there's also the tips section here. Tips. Uh, tips is how the, the anything in purple are new tips that have just been added. Um, but tips relate to the, the, the latest way that we code certain things. For instance, the namespace. There were older examples in video where we required a namespace like zim.circle. That's the zim name. Well, halfway through Zim's existence, we decided, nah, okay, let's let's make a Zim version where we don't have to have that. And you could put that in if you want. There is a way to force a namespace, but it's a bit easier without. So there's new circle. Uh, Zim.random, that was a way that we could get a random number. Uh, we have math.random as well, but that gets a random number between 0 and 1, and sometimes we want a range, and it's a little fiddly to have to turn the math.random into a range. So we made a little wrapper function called rand that does it for us. This gives us a random number between 0 and 20, but we could say 10, 20, and get a random number between 10 and 20. There's a few more parameters in there for rand as well that will help you do random numbers. Anyway, we can now just use RAND20, so we don't need the Zim namespace anymore. Here's a tip on chaining. So tips uh, basically are a great place to come and check things out. We've also got some debugging tips here at the end. Uh, if you see errors, um, if something is missing, there's uh, talk about why we do indenting and, and so, yeah, have a look here for a variety of tips. That was another thing that we didn't mention in the last video on basics. We did look at kids in school, though. Uh, I think you know how to find the vids, although we didn't go over the types of vids that we have. So maybe press that. You should probably know here. Uh, let's pause that. You should probably know here, this is all of the uploads, but we've got the creative coding lessons, and we did mention that in the last one. Bubbling is for when something is new, and so there's about 150, well, there is 150 bubbling videos currently for things that are new in Zim. Uh, if you're just coming into Zim, you don't necessarily need the latest, greatest thing in Zim. You, you want to know more about Zim. Uh, there's the code in five minutes. This is a bunch of uh, things that we've coded in five minutes. That's a great way to introduce yourself to Zim. It's not always the easiest things that we're coding there, but it does give you a broad example of the types of things that we can make. And Zim Explore is a more in-depth. Uh, the, these are usually, oh, I don't know. Uh, well, some of them start out at 20, 30 minutes, but 
in the end, uh, they, they're often an hour-long exploration of code that we've built. And there's a bunch of those. By the way, these ones start at the first one we made and go to the last one we made. Where, uh, and so does, so does the code in five minutes, whereas the bubbling are in reverse order. So this is the latest going to the earliest uh, way down there. All right, so that's our series. There's also a code zero. If you've never coded before, you might want to have a listen to that. This is assuming that you've never coded before. What are we doing here? <laughs> what is code? What are we doing on the canvas? What's JavaScript, etc.? Um, there's a capture series. These are older that uh, I think was for all of the Zimbits, 52, 64 Zimbits, 64 Zimbits. And you can take a look at those. But like I said, they're older. And so is the What Is series. The What Is series are JavaScript basics. And we reference them in school. But that's ES5, so the older version of JavaScript. And it's uh, older Zim as well, where we may be, for instance, using the Zim namespace. We also started a series on the docs, where each of the doc elements, you could see a video about that. And we did some of the most basic ones first, and we'll continue on with that series at some point. This is a series, I don't know if we'll, we'll make a playlist for it, called Basics, maybe we will. And we're on the second one. So uh, let's get to some code, though, shall we? That's, that's what I want to see. So I'm moving this over here. And here's the code that we were working on last time. So if you if you want, you can catch up there and view the last video. We talked about how we brought in Zim. So there's the Zim scripts. We talked about how to get this page in the first place from the code section. We copied a template into here. And then we have a frame which means that Zim is a framework. <laughs> so this is Zim code. We're fitting the, the stage. So this purple thing's called the stage. There's the color of the stage. And then the outer color is, is here, yellow. And we're fitting these dimensions into the browser window. So at the moment, I'm in Atom. And this is uh, in a thing called Browser Plus, which is a browser right in Atom. But I could right click here and open in Browser. And then we're, we open in the browser, and you can see the fit mode working there. There's a few other modes that we talked about as well, but um, I don't want to talk about that right now. What I want to do is get coding down in here. So this was our frame event. When we're ready, we run the code that's right here. And we have a stage, remember, and we've got the stage width, stage height. All this stuff is part of the template. So is the stage.update. Uh, we have to update the stage if we want it to, to show. And we'll talk a little bit about that today, if I remember. Down below, that's the end of the script. We have a, a viewport meta tag that's common. And then nothing in the body. So the template or uh, the frame will make a canvas tag for us and put a stage in it. So all that gets done for us, and that's what we see here. There is a tag mode as well to Zim, where you can put HTML down in the body, normal HTML, and you can give a div an ID, like a div tag an ID, and then use that ID right here, and it will scale this frame to fit in that ID, just like it were an image, because actually the canvas is an image. If we take a look here, this is the canvas. I right click, save image as. I could save this image, and, and the stage would show up just as it is here. So that's what we've got. We've got one image here that is the canvas. And Zim and CreateJS and the Canvas API, it's called, uh, allow us to program or code that one image so that it changes. It's like a, a single dynamic image. Around the outside, that's HTML in the fit mode. There's also a full mode, which takes up the whole of the browser window with the canvas at which point you need to scale the things inside there yourself. And Zim's got a whole bunch of ways that we can scale things, scale to in the layout class and for responsive design. Uh, but as we learn, we're going to be taking a look in the fit mode here, and we just want to talk about the types of things that can show up. As mentioned, we've got uh, the Zim School and those videos that take you through all of the stages of making. And we've got the Zim Kids. And they all talk about display objects first because they're very visual. 
In this series of Zim Basics, um, I don't think we need to go through all of the display objects, for instance, but we can look at some. I just want to talk about some of the things that are a little bit different or that you might not really know about uh, and play around with Zim in a sort of very loose and fun way. It's not necessarily for beginners. It's not necessarily for experts. It's uh, how to use Zim for everybody. <laughs> so that's what, uh, that's what this series is about. All right, we've made a new circle. We talked about chaining last time as well, where in this case, we're chaining a dot center on there. Let's make this a little bit, oh, sorry, I missed my dragging. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can focus on it. We can also chain on a dot drag, and drag is a convenience that Zim gives us. Create.js, you're able to make a drag. A drag is, uh, mouse down. So when we mouse down on something, we find out where we've mouse down on. And then as we press move, so uh, CreateJS gives us an event called press move. Well, it also gave us the mouse down event, but there's a special event called press move, which means as we're pressing down on them, as we mouse down on something and we're moving the mouse, then um, keep on firing this event, make this event happen. Uh, then there's the press up. So when we press up, we stop dragging. Well, those three events there that we would have to capture, not only that, but sometimes we want to drag within bounds. At, well, let me save this. So we save and refresh here. And now I can pick that up and drag it. Sometimes we want to drag within the boundaries there. So we have put in place a way to do that. New boundary. Well, uh, we can specify a new boundary with X and Y and width and height, or we've um, recently made a sort of shortcut. If we just say stage here, for instance, it, the, the very first parameter is the boundary that we want to drag in. So this will drag the circle within the stage. And now I cannot uh, move the circle outside of the, of the stage there. Cool, huh? Um, that's a little bit different than setting a boundary of the stage width and the stage height, or the x and y of zero and the stage width and stage height. Watch the subtle difference there. Uh, new boundary and uh, zero. So we'll start with zero, comma, zero, comma, stage width, comma, stage height. So we've, we've told this, uh, the boundary is zero, zero to the stage width, stage height, and I save this and refresh. And now, see the difference? So the center of the circle has to stay within the boundary. So if you give it a boundary, what's called the registration point of the object needs to stay within that boundary. And registration point is one of the sort of, it's a little boring, but it's very important to figure that concept out early on in your coding so that you know what's going on. Um, it's common, you know, Flash had a registration point, probably Director had it, I can't remember, I used to code in Director as well. So it's a common thing that we've had for a long time. And it just means when we position an object at an X and Y position, where in the object are we positioning? You know, What part of it? Is it the top left corner? Is it the center of it? In circular things, it's the center. We, we can see that by going dot outline. So outline is a Zim method that um, will do this. So I've saved that and I refresh. Unfortunately, our purple, it's hard to see. So let's, um, I can change the outline color, but probably just easier to change this color. Why don't we change it to blue? Will we be able to see it? Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, what the outline looks like. Um, each object, uh, each display object, so there's a bunch of display objects. Display objects are things that can be seen on the stage, such as a circle, so they're shapes. Circle, rectangle, triangle, there's a blob and a squiggle. Those are sort of uh, <laughs> loosey-goosey shapes. Maybe we can see those. They're unique to Zim for the most part and very, 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 very handy. Ooh, blobs and squiggles are. Um, they, in a sense, take the place of SVG, what SVG would be doing in the traditional HTML scalar vector graphics in the traditional HTML world. 
except there's some they're editable which uh, SVG is not inherently editable by the by the user that is uh, anyway so we've got these shapes there's other shapes as well there's also the display objects include the basic things such as a container and a bitmap and a, and a thing called a shape where you could dynamically draw shapes in there, a movie clip. Uh, but there's also components. The components are things like buttons, sliders and dials, uh, etc. And they're also display objects. All of those have boundaries, or sorry, bounds, I guess we call them, not boundaries, bounds. So bounds, uh, here's an example of the bounds of the circle. Note that the outline isn't really included in the bounds. Uh, it, it can go, it's half inside and half outside the bounds. That's how CreateJS has decided to, to treat an outline. So if we remove the outline here, which we can do, why don't we uh, remove the outline of the circle and is green a good color for you guys to see? I guess so. So we'll save that, refresh here. Uh, now the green sort of disappears a little bit. Why don't we make it a white circle? There we go. Um, you can see that the bounds are right there on the edge of the circle. Also, the round circle here is the registration point, and the X is the origin inside the circle. So there's zero. that's where zero, zero is inside the circle, and uh, the circle gets placed, if we were to place it at an X and Y on the stage, the circle would get placed with this part of it right at the X and Y. So uh, for instance, we'll put a grid in here, new grid. A grid uh, is, is sort of a, a, a thing that we can use as we're planning, as we're building. And it's a little different. Note that we didn't even have to add it to the stage. It will add it to the stage automatically. It starts off in percentage as well, because we're usually using the grid when we're doing responsive design. And so it starts off with percentages. And, and as you can see, uh, as we move to the far corner, it goes to 100 and 100%. If we want, we can say percent false, I think. I can't remember if it's percent tag or if it's, yeah, okay, so there we go. Percent false. We're telling it extra information that we want pixels, basically. And so now it's in pixels. Uh, sometimes the grid is handy to use when we're describing X and Y positions, etc. So let's position the, the, the circle rather than in the center. We're going to loc it at 200, 200. So the circle has a radius of 100. That means its width and height will be 200. So you can see that its width and height is 200. And look at where the registration point is. This circle, if I roll over there, is at 200, 200. <laughs> well, anyway, you can see the X and Y in the grid here at 200, 200. So indeed the circle gets positioned there. So that's where its registration point is. A rectangle, and what I was going to say is it's important to know this stuff, but it's kind of oh, a little bit dry or a little bit boring when we've got all sorts of exciting things to show you. So in this Zim Basic series, I'll show you a little bit about registration point, but it won't go in as, into it as deeply as, for instance, the coding, uh, creative coding with JavaScript video series. Okay, where there might be a whole video on registration point. Indeed, we've made we've made uh, examples uh, out there of uh, you know complete Zim examples that describe registration point in detail as well. All right, but we'll show you a little bit rectangle. So a rectangle. If we made our rectangle 100 by 100 and white, you'll see the difference. Here we go. We refresh. There is a rectangle that's 100 by 100, and its registration point starts at the left-hand corner. So anything that is rectangular in shape, such as images, images come in as, as a rectangular bounds. Uh, most components are rectangular, except maybe a dial, which is circular. Uh, of course, rectangles are rectangular. <laughs> so anything that's rectangular has its registration point and origin at the top left-hand side as opposed to center. However, we can adjust that. So we can adjust it by doing a thing called center regging, dot center uh, reg. 
Uh, center reg is the same as center, except it also centers the registration point, the round circle. So what I'm doing is I'm center regging it, but then we're also going to locate it. Uh, we wouldn't have to do that, but um, normally when we center something and center reg it, we actually want it to center on the stage and center reg on the stage. But in this case, uh, I'll keep it at a loc of 100 or 200, 200 so that we can see the effects. So there's the registration point centered now. And look, the rectangle is positioned still at 100, or sorry, 200, 200 right there. But now um, you can see the effects, right? Instead of putting the left-hand corner here, this is where it was, it's now moved the rectangle so that it's placed there. It didn't really move the rectangle. It just sort of redrew the rectangle in a different place <laughs> compared to the registration point. <laughs> it's a tricky thing, right? So that's a registration point. There's also uh, the ability to change the registration point with dot reg like that. And remember, these are chainable methods that we've got going on here. If we didn't use chaining, we could use, uh, if this was called rectangle, we could say rectangle dot reg x is equal to 100 or something like that. Rectangle dot reg y is equal to 100. We'd have to name this rectangle. So const rect is equal to. So there we've got a rectangle. We're doing all this stuff to it. And then we're manually setting, setting the registration x and y to 100, 100. If our rectangle is 100 wide, it's going to end up putting, moving the registration point to right here. So what happens is the registration point stays located at 200, 200, and the whole rectangle shifts. So it will be up here now. Shall we see it? Refresh. There it is. Uh, this is where it was, but the whole rectangle has shifted. Now this appears broken. But what outline is, it's actually done on purpose. What outline is, is it's a snapshot in time that lets us see at that time where the bounds, the registration point, and the origin are. Remember, the origin is this cross. So if we wanted to see where it is afterwards, we would have to not use it there, but come down below here and say rect dot, oops, dot outline, like that. So it's handy to have that snapshot in time. And when we refresh here, we can see, all oh, right, there we go. Now we've made a new snapshot. The registration point is at the at 100 and 100, as we said there, and that ha has shifted the rectangle up into this location. All right, so one last thing. If we don't have these, boop, and if we don't center reg, boop, uh, and we're not doing anything with the reg here. Oh, I was going to say, we could put, uh, we could, we've chained on the reg there. We could have said 100, 100 here. And that would have been the same as doing that stuff. So generally, we don't use the properties anymore. We might have to ask for the properties sometime. Hey, what's the registration of that? If we ever needed it. Uh, it's kind of rare that we do. But sometimes we might ask for the alpha of something or the rotation of something. That's quite common. What's the rotation of that? If we're asking for the rotation, we have to use the rotation property. But whenever we're setting the rotation, we usually use a dot rote here. Oh, that's another thing. Rote. We actually rotate about... I could spell it. We actually rotate around the registration point as well. So there's a couple extra things about the registration point. It is indeed important when positioning, but it's also very important when rotating and scaling because it scales, an object scales about its ro registration point and it rotates about its registration point. So let's try this. Uh, anyway, we could, we could have done the short chainable registration there if we wanted to. Uh, that's what we usually do when we set rather than dropping out to here. You see, if we don't drop out to here, if we didn't need to do all this stuff, we could still dot, lo uh, dot outline here. That means we don't have to outli outline down there. And that means we don't even need a rectangle. Pop. Or, you know, well, we need the rectangle, but we don't even need the variable, sorry. <laughs> right, so we don't have to leave chaining. We're doing everything within chaining. So let's have a look at this. We've set the registration point to 100, 100. We've rotated at 45 degrees. And if I refresh here, uh, let's see what happened. 
the route doesn't seem to have worked. Located, outline, and dragged. Oh, I haven't saved it. So nothing was changing. And look, the blue dot up there. Save the file and refresh. There we go. So now you can see it's been rotated 45 degrees around its registration point. So indeed, the short chainable reg also works. If we didn't change the registration point, can you imagine what this would look like? Have a little think. We've made a new rectangle, 100 by 100, rotated at 45, and located it at 200, 200. So remember, the registration point, if we don't change it, we haven't changed it anywhere. We haven't sent a reg, we haven't set it there, we haven't set it down here. These are called comments, by the way. If you don't know what comments are, it just means uh, it'll be ignored when it runs the code. Note that we can add comments to the, the dots. If we, put, if we put the dots on multiple lines like this, or chaining on multiple lines, we can comment out things. And isn't that handy? <laughs> isn't that great? Uh, anyway, we haven't set any registration points. That means the registration point is going to be right here on, on, the on, the, on the rectangle or the square. It's going to be right here, but it will be the whole thing will be moved down to here and then rotated 45 degrees. So you're going to see a rectangle that sits right here rotated. Are you ready? We save that and we refresh. Boop. There it is. And if I just take off the rotation so that you can vision this again, there's how we had it right at the beginning with the registration point of our rectangle at the top left. And we're rotating it about the registration point 45 degrees. If we rotate it 15 degrees, that's what it looks like. That's 15 degrees here. So rotation happens like that. It's got zero. This is zero degrees going along this line. And if we if we make it rotate 15 degrees, that's 15 degrees from this uh, horizontal line. Positive is going this way clockwise. Scale looks like this. I'll comment out the dot rote. So we can say dot ska for scale, and we can make it twice as big. Scale it twice as big. Now it used to be just 100 pixels, and now we're scaling it twice as big. <laughs> cool, huh? Um, there's also a scale X and a scale Y that we can use down here, but once again, and we can ask for the scale that way if we need to know what it is. Uh, but if we're setting a scale, we usually scale it right here in the chainable, short chainable methods. Hey, this might be a good time to take a look at some of those short chainable methods, yeah? So to find those, we go to the docs. So this is the Zim site, zimjs.com, press docs. And these are all uh, how the docs are organized is there's modules, the frame module. Uh, we used to actually have separate JavaScript modules for each of these um, a lot when we first started Zim. Then we realized we're a framework and usually people just use the whole framework and why bother having to bring in each of these modules? Or ha actually more like why bother upkeeping each of these modules <laughs> was, was more it. Um, we found people just use them all anyway. And we introduced another thing called Zim Distill right up here, Distill. And what Distill does is you can run Distill on your code and it will minify only the Zim code that you're using. So modules were made to be to, to make your code smaller. Oh, I don't need that module. I don't need anything in the controls. I'm not using controls, therefore I won't import that module. Well, uh, maybe you only use two methods and you had to import all of the methods. So there's actually a better way than modules for that. And, and that is uh, tree shaking or distill, what, what we call distill. And that just, uh, it, it, as you run your app, it processes it and says, oh, you're only using this, this stuff. You're not even using this method, this method, this method, this method, <laughs> et cetera. And, and so it will then minify a code that matches uh, only the code that you've been using. And that's smaller. Yay. Um, anyway, so we have left the code organized in modules. And here they are. There's the frame. There's things that are displaying. And so as mentioned, these are the basic display objects right here, like container and shape and the stage. 
uh, Zim Frame will make the stage for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Then there's Zim Shapes, which are here. Circle, rectangle, triangle, we mentioned those as well. There's the various components. Then there's the methods. And in Zim 4, uh, Zim used to be just a helper library for CreateJS. That's how it started off. Uh, CreateJS, if we wanted to drag something in CreateJS, we would, uh, there, there were like a bunch of steps that you had to do, maybe 10 lines of code. Uh, I didn't even finish that story. Dragging is more complex than just, um, than just dragging on the stage or dragging in a, in a, in boundaries. The problem is, the uh, problem comes when you start to nest components you put, or objects, you put um, objects within objects, containers within containers and start trying to drag then. Problems also arrive when you scale something, scale those containers and have to drag within them. Or when you rotate them, all that involves this stuff called local to local and global to local. And that's very, very tricky to, to code that. So we simplified that in Zim drag and just made it work. You have no idea what goes on behind there, but it's very complicated what goes on behind there. But the convenience is, hey, just drag. So that was a method. It's right here. Uh, drag. Do you see it anywhere? Well, if you if you want to, you can hunt for it, or you can go up to the search here and hit drag. And so here's Zim drag. Uh, and these are all the things that you can change about dragging. You can um, say swipe and throw it around, and you can uh, anyway, blah blah blah. So what was I saying about drag? Uh, oh yeah, we started off as a, a library for CreateJS. So you would make a CreateJS shape uh, and actually that wasn't terribly easy either. You had to make a new shape, you had to set the fill, you had to set the outline of it, then you would draw a rectangle within that on the graphics object. So it was, you know, a couple lines, three, three, four lines, and it wasn't totally obvious what you should be doing to make a circle or a rectangle. Well, Zim provided a convenience that was a rectangle or a circle. And this is how it grew. It said, well, wait a minute. I don't want to keep on doing three steps. Uh, it was sort of mirroring the, the basic canvas steps. I don't want to keep on doing those three steps every time I want to make a rectangle. I just want to make a rectangle. So that's how Zim uh, started. And it started as um, also a bunch of helper functions that you would apply to to create JS objects. So for instance, we would say zim.drag circle. And we were all happy about that. Oh, look how easy it is to drag the, the circle, the convenient circle that we made for you guys, create JS. And look how easy it is to drag it. Nice. Well, eventually we realized, oh my goodness, you know, all these functions that we've made, like the drag and like animate. So somewhere in here is animate as well. There's animate. Animate was really powerful. All these functions we're making um, if we made the methods right on the objects, so the display objects like a circle or a button, etc., if we made them uh, functions right on those objects, then they became, become what are called methods. And methods in object-oriented programming are easier because instead of saying zim.circle.drag, well, here, I'm talking, 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 talking. Let's just show you quickly here. So it started off saying zim dot drag drag circle like that instead of doing that it becomes circle dot drag now it's a method of the circle object and so in zim 4 we introduced all of our helper functions as methods and we call those zim fourth methods uh, right now we're in zim 10 where we're beyond zim 10 we're in zim cat we don't even think of the zim fourth methods we just call them methods so <laughs> uh, basically what that meant is we had to wrap or extend all of the create js things like the create js gave us a container well now we have a zim container which is really just a create js container with all these methods on them and uh, sometimes we treat them a little bit different. The CreateJS container, there you couldn't specify the bounds to start. Well, with a, a Zim container, if you want, you can specify how wide and how high the container is as parameters. So we've just made it a little bit easier all the way along on even those, those basic things. And uh, this is where we're at now, where we can just say circle.drag. I don't think you can really get too much 
Well, you could, when you make the circle, you could say, please, uh, please make me draggable. And uh, that's not a bad way to go, but it just adds another parameter. And if I want to make it anima animation, if I want to add animation to it, do I, do I, as I make the circle, do I say, hey, circle, you're also animating? You know, it's just like then every single method would become a parameter. And that'd probably be too much in the end. Uh, okay, anyway, that's a bunch of blah, 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 but that's where we're at. You know, I, I hope you enjoy the stories and, <laughs> and uh, see where Zim came from and why it's so easy to work with, you know, which is, which is fun. Okay, let's get rid of that. What were we looking through? I was wanting to show you the short chainable methods. That's what we came out here to do. But you can see that there's a bunch of methods amongst those methods are what we call the short chainable methods. These replace properties. And there's pose and loc. Those are two different ways. Why don't we look at pose and loc in this, in this um, basics thing and then sort of wrap it up about there. I kind of was wanting these videos to be around half an hour and we're just over half an hour. Hmm, but I feel like we haven't really done too much. <laughs> we, we talked around, so set the layout of the land, but I haven't done too much. Anyway, look here, we've got pose and loc. We also have move, scale, alp, visible, or viz, blend, hover, rote, size, skew, reg, okay, and then some top, bottom, and or that helps us in containers. We can also add a cursor, shadows, uh, depth is for 3D stuff actually for uh, VR stuff, and then a name. So these are what are called the short chainables that are usually working with properties such as X, Y, alpha, scale, rotation, registration point, and skew. Skew is another one of those transformation properties. All right, um, popping back into our code then, I mentioned we were going to take a look at uh, loc and pose. We already saw loc, loc, locates an object's registration point. So, or, you know, actually positions the registration point at the location that you put here. Uh, by the way, this is by default on the stage. You might be wanting to locate it at a certain X and Y within a container. And each container has its own X and Y coordinates. But we'll leave that for a later, a later date. Um, you can also put it at a certain layer. So uh, the first layer is zero, uh, the second layer is one, and that's the stacking layer, like Z index in, in HTML if you've done that. Anyway, uh, by default, it just will put it on the top of the stage if you don't put anything there. So that's loc. It locates the registration point. Pose is a little different. Let's take a look. Dot pose. If we say 200, 200, well, why don't we say 100, 100, just for something a little bit different like that, and watch what happens. So we're not going to locate it anymore, but we're going to pose it at 100, 100. Refresh. Huh, well, that's odd. It seems to have just taken the registration point and positioned it at 100, 100. So what is the difference? Hmm. All right, let me show you with the circle, I guess. We'll go to circle here. <laughs> for some reason want to start, start circle with an R. All right, so there's a circle with a radius of 100. And we're going to, uh, let's locate that. We'll locate it at 200, 200, refresh. So um, we've got a, well, why did it do that? Located at 200, 200, oh, because we scaled, <laughs> I forgot we scaled it. Yeah, comment out the scale. Like, what? Uh, what's happening? All right, so there's a, a location of 200, 200, and note that the registration point has been located at 200, 200. Now let's try a pose. This time we can actually pose it at 200, 200, like so. So here's loc at 200, 200, and here is pose at 200, 200. Hey, it moved. Pose, what pose means is it takes the left-hand side of the object and positions it at 200, takes the top of it and positions it at 200. So here's 200, 200, and it's been posed at 200, 200. Not the registration point, 
but rather the left and the top. However, we can also position it against the right hand side. So by default, it's positioned at the left hand side, but we can position it at the right hand side. And now the right hand, I guess we can, yeah, it's, so we've got 1024 is the, um, 1024, this is 10, I guess, and then 20 and then four pixels. Each of these little lines is 10 pixels, 1024. So we're coming back 200 pixels to whatever that is, 824. <laughs> so the left-hand side is 200 pixels from, or sorry, the right-hand side is 200 pixels from the right. And we can do the same with the bottom is the next one there, comma bottom. So pose is really handy for uh, positioning something around the edges. <laughs> I think it's bell bottom. <laughs> So that gave me an error and it didn't position anywhere. Now it's 200 from the bottom. Or indeed, here's zero from the bottom. There it is, a zero from the bottom. Let's just take the grid off for a sec. See what, we, what we're doing there without the grid. There it is, and let's take the outline off. So there's a circle positioned at 200 from the right, or indeed, zero from the right. Okay. It's similar to uh, right and top and left and bottom in HTML. You've got positioning, those positionings, same kind of deal. So this is matches your HTML positioning. And again, you can choose another container here. By default, it is the stage. And after the stage, you've got which uh, level? That's the ninth level in there. If you don't have more than nine things, though, uh, you won't tell the difference. <laughs> Okay, so that's loc and pose. You can also position from the center. So uh, you say center here and, cent well, why don't we keep it bottom? So this is at the bottom, but zero from the center. There it is centered at the bottom. Okay, so just remember that and a rectangle would work the same way. You'd have a rectangle centered and stuck against the bottom. So uh, this one has not, pose has nothing to do with the registration point. It's only the edges of the objects. And whereas loc is locating the registration point. So you can choose there. The last thing to, to say is um, a dot move, MOV. So MOV is movement in relative movement. So from where it is, I want to move it over 100 more. So I refresh here and it moved over 100 more. Say I, uh, I had it at positioned at the left, one, uh, zero, zero from the left. So if we didn't move it, here's what it would look like at the left bottom. And now I'm moving it, moving it 100 in the X. This will move it 100 in the Y. So if we move it 100 in the Y, just be careful, what will that look like? We've moved it over in the X. Y is positive going down, so it's actually going to be off the screen a little bit, or off the, um, the stage. So that's one thing to notice, that the stage ends here. That means if we put something off the stage, we won't see it. So minus 100 would bring it up, like that. But why would we bother moving it? We could just do it right here in the pose. This says move it 100 from the left and 100 from the bottom. And we refresh, it's in the same place. Okay, I've just refreshed it and, and there it is. Uh, how about we just move it 50 from the bottom. So often when I'm placing a logo on the right hand side, uh, I would just do this. So here's a frame dot make icon, I think it is. So that makes a, a Zim icon. It's it's on the frame. We have a few things that we can make. We can make the Zim cat. We can make the icon. We can make these um, concentric circles that are uh, Zim colors. Anyway, if I say dot pose at 30, comma 30, com comma uh, right, comma bottom. Oops. There we go. So I've just I've just made an icon. And if I refresh here, and position that icon 30 pixels, 30 pixels, right bottom, nice and easy. Isn't that good? 
All right. So why don't we leave it at that? This is uh, Zim Basics. This is the second video in the Zim Basics where we're just, it's like an explore, but we're exploring uh, from the beginning uh, all about Zim, telling some stories about Zim, and uh, hopefully you, you, you like it. Woohoo! Yay! I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day. Come on in and visit us at this location right here, zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord and hang out with us. We'd love to see you. Ciao. Hope you look forward to the next one.